It's Brian Preston, the money guy. Um, all right, Brian, this next question, this is from Laura. It's also sort of a housing question. No, nah, not really. It's a debt question. Uh, what are your thoughts on using a home equity line of credit for financing an unforeseen necessary large expense? We found mold in our attic and need a new roof ASAP. We thought we still had a few years uh, and had just started saving for it. Uh, would there be any better option than using a HELOC and then paying it off as soon as we can? Roofs are expensive out west, but thankfully we also have plenty of equity currently. Uh, what would you say to Laura in terms of like sometimes life happens and sometimes things just hit us and we got to figure out how to navigate that. Are there any like things you would say to any words of wisdom you'd throw her way? Yeah, by the way, case study wise, this is actually what a home equity line is used mm -hmm. for is to make improvements on your house. Sure. Um, whereas not to go buy the new Raptor because you want to look cool to your next door neighbors. I feel attacked. No, quit. I feel attacked. You would pay cash for that raptor. <laughs> but it is. But I think that I've seen people who use equity from their house to go buy items that immediately right. depreciate. I know all the trolls. I don't mean to be feeding you. Cars will depreciate again. Don't worry. It's coming. Just don't get all thinking you figured things out by starting your used car lot in your backyard. It's just not, mm -hmm. not ideal. But it is one of those things. Home equity lines... I would encourage Laura to first go do her due diligence and research on home equity lines are variable, not locked in, meaning you're going to flop around with whatever the interest rates are at the time being. I would have Laura go figure out what your your home equity line would pay if you if you went this path. And then I'd also go ask the same banks and research and say, what if we didn't, instead of turning this into a home equity line of credit, which is left open and is variable, what if we had a loan that was more fixed? Mm -hmm. Just see what the bank says. And because they might be able to get you a five-year, seven-year, where you know that you're locked in at this specific super low interest rate. And that also allows you to set your amortization of how fast you want to pay mm -hmm. it off. And I would try to correlate those two things. Because, look, a roof... What is a shelter? You've got to have you gotta coverage. Have You've got to make sure you don't have water coming in when it's raining. So I'm not going to get mad at you and tell you how shameful it is that you didn't have enough money to pay for the roof. I'm going to give you the solution and tell you, yeah, I think that's probably is a case where if it's an emergency, you don't have the cash, you don't have the assets to put a roof on your house use some type of debt from the equity in the house, but try to see if you can take advantage of the low interest rate marketplace and lock it in so that you have more flexibility just in case life happens and we have more volatility. Yeah, and I don't know, like, again, all lenders are different. So what they are and are not willing to offer varies wide, uh, wildly. Uh, one of the things you could also look at, if, if, a se if a separate secondary loan is not available, we are in a unique place right now where interest rates are still low, but home prices have appreciated. And you said you have a lot of equity. You could just look at a traditional cash out refinance, right? You could look at potentially resetting your mortgage, assuming that you get a uh, rate that's comparable to the rate that you have now. Yes, you're expanding your debt load, but this is what I would encourage you not to do. Don't allow that roof that you would have paid off in five years be something you pay off over the next 30 years. Keep yourself on that same amortization schedule. Keep paying extra on it so that you get your debt load back to where it would have been five years from now. That's not a bad solution, assuming you're not having to jump up in rates to do and it. And then once you break the seal of using that home equity line, if you ended up going that path, don't don't just start using it as a slush fund. I think mm -hmm. that's the other thing, because those accounts, they give it. I remember back, I've shared with you guys, I've been very confessional. I had a credit card. I had a checkbook. I mean, the banks make it so easy to get access to that money. Just because you figure out you have this opportunity doesn't mean you should necessarily do it and use it uh, all the time because it's Bo said it earlier. This is a use asset mm -hmm. that actually protects your family, gives you shelter. If things go really bad, you don't want to lose the house. That's right. So so be very careful with how you use any of these debt instruments with your house. And then, you know, it's it's one of those things get out of debt mm -hmm. as fast as possible um, and understand that we cover so much content on debt and housing. I think we could, you, you just go look at our archives and you'll be in a good place.